guys, it's the Daily Solution Podcast. What did you say over there? I said, I said it's the Daily Solution Podcast. So, so what was that? Oh, yeah, I'm just going to say it one more time now here. Are you uh, listening? I'm listening this time. Okay. Well, I said this is the Daily Solution Podcast. Daily Solution Podcast. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Great. Hey, hey Graham. <laughs> All right. What's our question today? All right. Our question today is help. <laughs> that's it. Oh, boy. That uh, seems like the wrong avenue for someone to reach out to help for. <laughs> I know. It's, it's help. I just opened, but I'm getting at least a couple complaints a day about sound in the tanks, probably from traffic. What are my options? Traffic sound, huh? The old traffic sand. <laughs> um, An oldie but a goodie. Yeah, so there are some options. I mean, that's the nice thing. And they range from the, like, basic to the extreme. Yep, yeah, and and so, uh, you know, basic is just tear down your entire center, yeah. rebuild it somewhere else, start, start over, from scratch. Start a new life, <laughs> change your name. But uh, so probably the, what I, where I would start is vibration what? what was that word? <laughs> Can you say it again? Where I would start is <laughs> vibration isolation pads. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, too. Because that's the cheapest, and the only one of these that doesn't like alter your building. Yeah, but so here's the deal. If, you, if, if you're hearing traffic noise inside your float tank, and your float tank isn't already sitting on top of some kind of acoustical dampener, then you have a really easy solution, at least yeah. that is very likely to eliminate most of that traffic noise coming in, which is great. And that's what Ashcon said, which is the vibration isolation pads. Or a vibration isolation mat. Um, at Float On, we tend to prefer the pads because you just have less con- points of contact with the ground, which we'll get into when we explain these. But basically, there's varying levels of degree that you can go to to soundproof vibration coming in to your float tank from the floor. So these things are... First of all, not that expensive. We're talking about, we usually use the three inch by three inch pucks uh, that we get. And we'll put, what, how many of those under a tank? Like about 11. 11. So we'll put 11 of those under a tank. So you're talking about, you know, $33. Uh, and then you also need to usually connect them to some sort of rigid, usually what we use now is a, a plastic type material, high density polyethylene or an HDPE board. Uh, and that's just. And I, but I should say that's opposed to plywood or something right. like that, creating a plywood base for your your tank to sit on, which we used to do. And eventually, that plywood will get damaged by salt water and and just not be feasible anymore. So we've switched to using this plastic material. Is is the reasoning there? Yeah. So you're taking these vibration isolation pads, and and I guess let's start with what they do. The whole idea is that they dampen vibration going into your float tank. Uh, they're really made more for doing the kind of reverse of that like they're made for putting under machinery that creates a lot of vibration to stop the vibration from getting to the rest of the building um so you you'll often see these on like hvac and stuff like that uh big air conditioner units on a on a roof we stuck them underneath crazy shoe machines next door when there was a shoe (laughs) shop right next to float on but um they're basically these pucks that have alternating materials in layers uh so the ones we use just go rubber and then a layer of this kind of plastic that uh this like eva plastic is what they call it and another layer of rubber and just because the sound has to move through those different densities of those materials it changes the sound wave every time it hits one of those places where it needs to shift densities and by doing that you're kind of dispersing the sound because it just doesn't sound waves don't like kind of having to continuously go through different layers like that and it's actually amazing how well these eliminate specifically vibration sound coming in, which yeah. I think is why Ashcon and I jumped immediately to this as a solution when we heard the word traffic noise. Because I prom- the traffic noise that you're hearing isn't even the horns coming from outside, I, I can almost promise you. Yeah, it's not but the engines. It's it's these this low rumble coming from often really big trucks, motorcycles, uh, that deep bass that just kind of goes through the street and into your concrete foundation or wooden foundation up into your tanks is very difficult to block out by any other means than actually just trying to decouple your float tank from the floor and somehow reduce those vibrations before they make it up into it. So, uh, again, this is the... Uh, I, I, in addition to that, not only traffic, but those are, in general, the hardest noises to, uh, to kind of block out. So there's a chance that, separate from the traffic noises coming in that, that make people acutely object, 
you might also just end up with a much more soundproof environment. Like it might be immediately noticeable if you get these layers of vibration isolation pads under your tank, uh, even just with the little background hums and things like that that you hear. So yeah, you basically get these, and like I said, they're just three inch by three inch pucks. And uh, that means that when the whole float tank is sitting on just 11 of those, it's not really touching the ground in that many spots. So just the, the least amount of surface area possible is also going to help reduce the vibrations that can actually go up and get into your float tank. Uh, but because there's just a few of them, then they create these kind of points of, you know, all the weight is sitting on those one certain points. And sometimes the base of the float tank or the fiberglass might not be quite strong enough to uh, have all of its weight on just 11 small points like that. So we'll take the, the pucks and we'll attach them to a big sheet of HDPE, um, that kind of uh, plastic material, and we'll cut that to the size of the float tank, and then the float tank will sit on top of that. And that kind of distributes the weight over it, but still means the whole float tank is only touching the ground on those kind of uh, on those points that are that are made up of these vibration isolation pads. And one important thing to not forget is that you have to do that to your filtration system too, because yeah. basically soundproofing like it's always gonna the sound's always gonna go through the weakest spot. So if you have your whole float tank sitting up on vibration isolation pads and it's all doing great and nice, but your pump is sitting on the ground and your pump is connected straight in to your float tank through a pipe, then the sound's just going to go through that way. So you kind of have to do the whole system. It's incredibly easy to spend a ridiculous amount of money on soundproofing and accomplish almost nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like the level of, uh, of detail, again, having your pump sitting on the ground can just ruin all of the time that you just spent putting that vibration isolation stand underneath your float tank. Uh, similarly, your float tank actually touching your walls is another one to avoid. So have your tank sitting at least an inch off of your walls in, on every side. Uh, and that's even true of things like uh, cabin style tanks, where oftentimes you'll have uh, the exterior uh, paneling kind of butting up and making almost this solid surface, even that you want to have sitting off the wall and preferably only filled in with some silicone caulking or something like that to make uh, the actual seamless edge. But anywhere where your float tank touches the wall, that's another place where vibration can come up through your floor, through the studs, through the wall, and directly into the float tank. And you might find even putting in a stand if your float tank's leaning against a wall, you still get that same traffic noise coming in. Yeah, so specifically with dealing with traffic noise, this this seems to be the solution that often does it for people. You know, it's it's not often that I'll hear a float center does this and still has too much traffic noise. Um, so if this doesn't work, you know, probably the next step would be just to go outside, buy a giant road close sign, and put it in the street and just <laughs> not let anybody drive down that street anymore. The city tends to frown on that, but, you know, just throw <laughs> the officials in a float tank. And... <laughs> All right, thanks so much for the question. Yeah, and if you guys have more questions, you can always hop on to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast. Type your question in there. Would you have something to say? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, we'll see you later.